Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The Framework Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Ana Trujillo-Limon, joined by my other host, Jamie Hopkins. Jamie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Ana. It's of course. It's exciting to see you again. <laughs> Day three here out at FPA Annual, so we're yes. having fun. We've, we've moved to a new location here, which is always fun in the live shows, right, where you get the challenges yeah. of light and sound and, and new props and tables. Exactly. So. We like to test our adaptability at Carson, so we are adaptable, and, and we're excited to be here today with Emma Cram. Emma, welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, well, I'm so honored to be here. Thank y'all for having me. Of course. So, so we, we're here in Seattle, and we always kick off talking about food. So have you eaten anything here in Seattle that you're oh. just like, wow, that's my new favorite food? Oh, so I... Uh, I have become really obsessed with sushi recently and last night had the best sushi of my life. It was like a little bit spicy and there was salmon on top. It was fresh but still fun. So, and I wish I could tell you the name of the restaurant. Oh, Isn't that awesome? My next question. But... <laughs> Were there leaves on the sushi? Like a beautiful no. leaf? Um, no, okay. there was um, like little ha- like slivered jalapenos though. Oh, I love, I love that. Uh, so a little, a little bit of spice, but. Oh. Yeah, I totally forgot the name of the restaurant, but we could walk there. So it's walking distance from here. Okay, right on. That is <laughs> Jamie awesome. had some good sushi out here, too. I did at Canlis, was okay. the name of the place. Okay. And uh, I've now annoyed two people with that restaurant. <laughs> so that we had a guest on, and like I think she's from here. She's from here and has been on the wait list for like 18 months or something. <laughs> like, how did you get in? And I just like signed up on Sunday and they like texted me and I went. And then. <sighs> So last night we drove, I drove from uh, here in Seattle to Portland at around 2.30. Uh, and then I drove back last night after a meeting. So we okay. didn't get back to like 1 a.m. this time, which is like 4 a.m. my time. So mm. it was a long day. So we get down there and we start talking and I tell them like, hey, if you go up to Seattle, you got to go to Canlis. And Mary Kate Gulick, our CMO, went with us and she goes, wait, you went to Canlis? And I was like, yeah, yeah, like on Sunday, I just like sent this thing in and went. So her sister was going last night and Mary Kate was going to go with her, but then went on this trip with me and her oh sister God. had been on the wait list for like six months to get oh in. Gosh. So Mary Kate was uh, the second person now that I've annoyed with oh, that. Well, I'll add it to my list and maybe I'll get in faster than six months yeah. or maybe do, not. Do I'm not even going to try. I don't have good luck. <laughs> do they have good sushi in Texas? Um, I mean... It's not like fresh fish, of course, mm-hmm. but there is there are a few good spots. Um, but yeah, it's not as fresh, of course, as being on the coast. So, but I do love a good sushi or poke bowl, you know, yeah. all of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do too. I love sushi. But Emma, since we're here at FPA's annual conference, and I know you're on the Next Gen leadership team, mm-hmm. so congratulations oh, on that. Thank you. And we were talking before the show that Next Gen is always a really vibrant and passionate community, and you yeah. guys are just like, I don't know, I love it. it's the future of the organization and everything. So talk to us a little bit about both your journey into the profession and then your FPA Next Gen origin oh, story. Oh, okay. So it's funny looking back on my story into the profession, this career totally chose me way more than I chose. And I actually said (laughs) no pretty much any step of the way. Um, And it just is crazy to look back. But I, um, my original life dream was to be a middle school girls basketball coach. So very different. But I, um, starting off, I mean, I'm from a big family, love sports. And um, the coaches that I had always had an impact on me. And I wanted nothing to do with money. Like I was... Um, my family, when I was in middle and high school, had really difficult financial times and I am the oldest. And so literally thought it was all my fault. Uh-huh. And, um, but then, and which was not, it was just me putting pressure on myself as an oldest child and just decided that I'm never going to care about money because I never wanted to be stressed about it. Um, but then as I got to college, just didn't feel like at home in my education classes. And my dad had always said I should go into business, but I was a bratty teenager that didn't want to <laughs> listen to my dad. So, um, but ended up switching and had a good family friend that was a financial planner and told me I should look into it and I went to Texas A&M and the program was just getting started and so I got connected with the professor and somehow ended up in an internship that I didn't realize was financial planning and it just was all these little signs that were like okay Emma your path is financial planning and I think what I wanted to do as a basketball coach has so translated to financial planning and um and I think all of us are stressed about money in some capacity. And so getting to help clients through that has just been such an honor. And um, I still love basketball, but love this career way more. Awesome. Um, so you're kind of like a coach, though, to your I, clients. That's it. <laughs> I feel like some days, yes, for sure. <laughs> but probably not middle school girl no, clients, no, right? No, Not yet. <laughs> Maybe they act like middle school girls. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't have to answer that. <laughs> but, but I think you could weave that into like a coaching aspect of financial planning in the yeah. future, right? Like do a middle school girls like financial coaching program. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, so, and I think I still have a heart for pouring into to young people, which is partly how I got involved in Next Gen. Um, and I've gotten to mentor some middle and high school girls on the side and they don't really want to talk about money mm-hmm. at that stage. They just want to talk about boys, and, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine too. But I, I do think that that, especially getting, you know, now that I'm a few years in, I would love for that to be more of a way to just have young people more exposed to financial education in a really fun way. So we'll see. Certainly. Have you coached basketball before? Um, not officially. I mean, I've done like random little like side three and three tournaments okay. and stuff like that. Did you play into I college? Too? Not college. Okay. I thought about it, but um, got kind of burnt out. Okay. So I, but my dad coached me all growing up. My brothers all play. And um, so, yeah, so I have nothing official, but I'm also like the rules and discipline side of it. Like, I just want everyone to have fun. And so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so was your dad like, like a hard? Oh, hard yes. Coach. <laughs> Super like hard ass, but <laughs> best way. And I totally needed it. So yeah. I saw a meme the other day that was like, I, coach, I was late to practice one day and coach made me run laps. My dad is a coach and he drove me to practice. And he sent it to my sister. And my dad was our, our basketball coach too. And he was so mean to us i'm like why it's like setting an example like right? yes yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> yeah it's like the best and the worst and of course like you go to practice but then you come home and have the post practice yeah. practice where you work on whatever you did wrong and yeah, yeah. so were yeah. you a shooting guard or what yes is, yeah. yeah shooting guard i did a little bit of point guard but i hated playing point so oh, okay. shooting guard was my was my strong spot well I guess because you know you've got the flair on today with the jacket. <laughs> That's more of a shooting guard flair, oh, you know. Okay. Yeah, it That's is. That's what I thought when I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Love it. So, Matt, tell us a little bit about the work you do, and and I know that you're kind of passionate also about bringing in the ch- children of clients and kind of yeah. working with them. Tell us about that and give some tips to other advisors and planners who might want to do that type of work yeah so that has been something that has been so much fun for me um and i think our firm has done a really good job we know that all of our clients there's going to be a big wealth transfer at some point and knowing when and how to engage your clients kids is can be really tricky and i think when financial planning or can be so intimidating like it's almost like walking into the dentist's office where you know you're about to get grilled and and poked and prodded and and i never want financial planning to be that way but i think from a young person that there's can be so much that's intimidating about working with your parents financial planners but i think like i mentioned i have a heart just for pouring in the younger people and so with our clients kids we offer to every all of our clients anytime their kids want any sort of financial education Um, We are glad to meet with them, help them with college planning, career planning. And so um, for me, that's just been a natural niche for me. And and it's just been fun meeting these like younger, whether it's late in high school, college, early in their career. And some want all business and and some want to just like be lighthearted. Mm -hmm. um, But it's just been really fun for me kind of getting to feel the, okay, I can provide excellent education and build a relationship with these clients. And they know they can call us. Um, and then also their parents know that their kids are starting to make smart financial decisions too. So, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really great. The, when you engage with the, the kids of the clients, do you have like a specific format you use? And I know you said like, you know, some of them want it to be more light, some want it really yeah. business, some might want college planning or career, but do you kind of have an approach to that that you use? So yes and no. Um. I think everyone comes at such a different stage and all of us like relate to money differently. Mm -hmm. So for me, some kids are coming to us because their parents have forced us to meet. And so for that type of meeting, I'm just trying to one, figure out how they relate to money Mm -hmm. and what they've learned, what they're excited about, what they're afraid of. Um, And then what, and so then I can cater the meeting. But of course, before the meeting, you can't really right out. so um so knowing if you know if a client's bringing their child and they are not really excited about the meeting i'm just trying to make it as fun and basic as possible um and and don't even dive into money right away more just about dreaming with them what they're mm-hmm. doing in their life um, but for one you know for a client that maybe has a, their daughter that's early in her career and making a switch um 
and watch just career advice or employee benefit reviews. Um, for that, then I know we're going to get a little bit more deeper. They have probably a little bit more exposure. They have a few years of earning income. Yeah. And so, but similarly, I'll just meet them where they're at. And But what's also challenging is for young people, like building a long-term financial plan, mm-hmm. there's so much that's unknown. And so like having to start building a plan without with so many unknowns can be tricky. So it's like, what are small steps we can take today that increase your opportunity of success in the future? Mm -hmm. And so whether it's a Roth contribution or this beneficiary designation on life insurance, it's getting those basic things in order so they're on a path to then when we can build the long-term financial plan, they already have so much fun. So all that to say, no real process, but it's I kind of enjoy that with it too. I like like how you tailor it though, like based on yeah. their their vibe yeah. and what they they're yeah. kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah. So Emma, we also like to do a little uh, rapid fire, just to, <gasps> first thing that comes to mind. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so, what's one book that you recommend that you've read that you recommend to other young planners? Ooh. So I'm currently in the CFA program, so all my books have been really <laughs> meaty, intense, not yeah. fun books that I would not recommend, but. Um, I think that, gosh, Atomic Habits, I recently read it, That's and okay. I um, I think that it's just such a good overview and, and just, like, little things that you can do that can help, um, I don't know, for things that you struggle with or goals that you're wanting to achieve. It's, there just are a lot of really helpful takeaways, and so that's awesome. what's on my mind, but I think that that would be a great one for anyone that is a great one. James Clare actually presented at two FPA retreats in the oh, past. And so that's when yes. I first, and I b- actually bought it at one retreat and I, I just reread it and just tried it's, it. Yeah. And I feel like it's one that's, <laughs> it's very like approachable and so many practical tips. Sorry, I got away from the rapid fire, but oh, what's, what's, <laughs> I, got ex- I got excited about Atomic Habits, <laughs> but what's um, the best advice you've ever received? So recently, I think that transitioning from an associate or like yeah. client service type of role to being a lead cleaner mm-hmm. um, is a big jump and I was really nervous in the midst of that and I work for two advisors that are incredible but polar opposite for mm. me they're very intelligent super nerdy and and a little more introverted and then it's bubbly me that's in the office and <laughs> just tries to make friends with everyone and um, but when I was first making that transition I was trying to be just like them and trying to be very like just as nerdy and, and poised as they were and um it was really stressing me out that I was not being myself with clients and and one of my advisors sat me down and said Emma like all we want is for you to be who you are as a financial planner we don't want you to be us like we've hired you and we want you to serve our clients and and I think that all of us as planners and in any profession are uniquely gifted to serve a certain group of people and if I was trying so hard to be someone else that I wasn't I wasn't enjoying it and I wasn't connecting in with clients that they're not as gifted at. So that was like a huge light bulb moment um, and really freeing for me to to really start developing who I am and who I want to be as a financial planner. Well, you said you're uh, starting to study for the CFA. Uh, So that also, you know, that's the investment part, mixing that in. (laughs) But what's your favorite topic area inside of financial planning? So if you, if somebody, if, if your office said, hey, we need you to be the specialist yeah. in X, what would that be? Oh, so I, it's funny, I'm in the CFA program, but investments are not my, I kind of did it <laughs> because it was a weak area, uh, which is, it's been good. I've learned a ton. It's ripped mm-hmm. me to shreds. But, uh, but my favorite area is estate planning. I think that that when you talk about to a client about what they want to do, have left on this earth mm-hmm. and it's, it's also hard like talking about death is not fun but when you talk to them about what the legacy they want to leave behind and also the people and and charities they want to take care of you're really tapping into the core of who they are and it's when someone has passed like the financial just turmoil that it is i mean let alone the emotional mm-hmm. grief so getting to walk alongside clients and their families when they've lost someone and saying like hey i'm handling all this paperwork like and and i know this process so let me walk through it with you so that you don't have to worry about money um and it's both the like while you're alive getting to understand a client's heart but also after a death getting to honor the legacy that that they shared with you as the planner um and then just being there for their family members so estate planning is my like favorite area yeah. it's a hard and heavy thing but it's i think where you get to bond with clients the most 
It's a good point, and it's actually come up, I don't know, probably four or five times this week in our interviews yeah. about estate planning, and that's where I started, right? I was an attorney, and I, I did my own estate planning work for people, so that's where I had clients. I didn't have financial planning clients, but yeah, I think it's interesting at like the financial planning annual conference. We've had a lot more about the estate planning part being integral to it, so I think that's just, you know, I don't know that we have a large enough end of, uh, you know, numbers to make that significant, but it seemed like that's come up more here, which is yeah, super okay, interesting. Cool. For sure. And Jamie um, has a new book out called Find Your Freedom that yes. has a really wonderful chapter on estate planning that it seems like very similar <gasps> ideas. So you should check it out. Okay, for sure. well, I have it. It's in my Amazon cart. So uh -huh. now, okay. now there's estate planning. I mean, I was going to get it anyways. Yeah, but so sure. you were just waiting. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm going to meet <laughs> no. him first, and if I don't, if like, I don't him, like him, I'm deleting yeah. it. I see how it is. It's no, fine. I, I am judged. Here. It's all right. <laughs> no, no, no. It's really, I have like such a long list post. I just sat for level two. So I'm like, have this long list oh, of Congratulations. Fun High five. Uh, well, I haven't done yeah. the results yet. No, so. but still, you get, that means you got through level yeah. one and you studied for level two. So those are two congratulations. Okay, yeah, that's thank awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, Amal, this has been a blast chatting with you here at, at, at Mule Conference. And as we near the end of our time, we like to always close with this question. And it's, what does finding your freedom mean to you? This is such a good question. Um, as I think about freedom, it's it's such an important thing, but can be so difficult to define and even know when you've attained the level of freedom. But when I think about that, it's like, okay, let's start with what isn't freedom, and that would be slavery. And I think there's so much that we can be enslaved to, whether it's addiction or coping mechanisms or past hurts or insecurities. And, and when you're in any sort of slavery like you're not free to be who you really are so i think as you're working through whatever you're enslaved to you're stepping into this like you're stripping away whatever's holding you back from being who you are and what you were called to and so i think freedom for me um has looked like facing some of the harder things and and stepping more deeply into the ability to just live and enjoy life and be at peace with who you are and what you're doing Wow, that's beautiful. I love that. And, and, I, and I'll push on one at the end here, even though we're getting close to the end, which is, uh, do you want to, how, how vulnerable do you want to be about any of those? Is there anyone that you're proud of sharing that you've overcome or working through, surviving, thriving? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, there's a lot. I think for me, and also I love the question, I think vulnerability is so important. And, but for me, I'm, I'm always, I'm very perfectionist. <laughs> and so I think for me, it's, I've had to work through a lot, like how I can be free from my value being tied to my works. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there've been different stages of <laughs> working through yeah. that. And it kind of comes up again. Um, but I, I, yeah, I think growing up, I just always had this mindset that I'll be loved if I'm star of the basketball team or get good mm -hmm. grades. And it's totally yes. translated into my career. Um, and so realizing and learning how to work because I love it, not because I'm gonna on this like make it or break it or loved or not loved scale. Um, but yeah, still in the midst of that one yeah. and probably a lifelong thing, but but that's probably the biggest thing that I've that I've worked through. Yeah, that perfectionism is hard. It's hard yeah. to escape, so I, I, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's giving yourself the permission that you're worthy without the other things making you feel that way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think too when you're in that mindset, there's always a next thing. Mm -hmm. Like you get this level of perfection that you're achieving, but then there's another thing is you feel crappy about yourself all over again. And you never really get to feeling whatever you're chasing because um, it's just a constant chase. Um, so. Well, luckily, there are only three levels of the CFA. So, like, <laughs> you get through that one. Like, there isn't a oh. four. There isn't a level four Thank right goodness. now. Thank goodness. And so. I keep saying, I'm never setting again. So, y'all can hold me. Yeah. Well, that won't happen. No. Not, not I, I, here I at FBA. Believe, Lifelong learners. Yeah. So, yeah, you are, you are still, you are still, I'm like. Always learning. You, yeah. You, you are still in the next gen. And they all yeah. say that. And then you see them 15 years later. They got 15 more I designations. Know. Oh, and it's and... so obnoxious, too. But then I'm like, I'm beating.
reading it. I'm yeah. part of it. <laughs> well, so there's like the AEP, which is the estate planning one, oh, which you it. like, you, I'm like there's <laughs> there's it. almost zero percent chance that in like well, two you... years I'm not going to see it. And you're like, yeah, I'm getting the AEP right now. <laughs> James always going to encourage you to get as many designations he has after his name, which is so. Like... <laughs> so I actually don't encourage people to get a million designations. Just I think encourage that... her to get the estate plan. Well, well, so I would because it's I think in the areas that you love, mm, showing yes. that you're committed to that area is always what I think is important. I don't think you need to show that you're good at everything. I think it's good to show that, like your answer was, hey, I love estate planning. Then what I would always want to see from somebody is so like, so you committed to that yeah, as your like expertise. Yes. And I think it's also like, where is your heart in it? Like mm -hmm. for me, honestly, when I started CFA, I don't know that my heart was really in it to want to learn in depth investing. It was probably driven a lot by my yeah. perfectionist, high achiever, psycho <laughs> mindset. Um, and so I think if your heart is really wanting to learn, and and if there's a designation that gets thrown in there too, awesome. Um, but it, well. yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, I think there's a time and place for designations, but you're not defined by them yeah. at all. You exactly, are you are not defined yeah, by those careers. <laughs> exactly. Well, Emma, tell people where they can find you on Twitter, LinkedIn, where's the best oh, way to yes. find you? So I'm like not great at social media, but I am on LinkedIn, just search Emma yeah. Cram. Okay. I would love to connect with anyone um, and just, yeah, love being a part of encouraging people's careers. Um, and then our I work for Cadent Capital in Dallas, Texas, so you can look up our company website. Awesome. And yeah. Great. Well, thank you both for joining oh us gosh, today. Thank you and for having me. This was yeah. so fun. And the safe travels back home. Yes, thank you, y'all, too. And thank the rest of you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Framework Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Yeah.